So we'd like to add 2 thirds plus 3 sevenths. And anytime you're adding fractions, of course, you have to find a common denominator. One technique for finding a common denominator is just to take the two denominators in the problem and multiply them together. 3 times 7 are the two denominators. You get 21. That'll work for a common denominator. It might not be the smallest possible common denominator or the least common denominator, but it'll work for adding fractions and subtracting fractions. Uh, so, let's look at two-thirds. We want to convert that two-thirds into a fraction that has a denominator of 21. The way we found the 21 in the first place is multiplying 3 by 7. So, if we want a denominator of 21, we better multiply the 3 by 7. To make this a legal operation, we have to also multiply the numerator by 7. So 2 thirds is converted when we multiply across into 14 21sts. Then we have to look at 3 sevenths. We want to convert 3 sevenths into a fraction that has a denominator of 21. So to do this, we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 3. Multiply straight across again. 3 times 3 equals 9. 7 times 3 equals 21. So we've rewritten both 2 thirds and 3 sevenths into fractions with the same denominator. So we can take this problem, 2 thirds plus 3 sevenths, and rewrite it as 14 21sts plus 9 21sts. Now these two fractions, they have the same denominator, so we can add them really easily. Just take the 14 plus 9, put that in the numerator, leave the 21 in the denominator, and we get 23, 14 plus 9 is 23, over 21. Now, this answer works just fine, but it's possible on the AccuPlacer that 23 over 21 would not be uh, an option in the uh, four or five solutions that you're given. What you might need is actually to convert this 23 21 into a mixed number. So just keep that in mind. Um, 23 over 21. If you want to convert this to a mixed number, just go back to, I think, the second video um, on the website. And you'll find that when you do this conversion, you get 1 into 21sts. So depending on the answers that you're given on the AccuPlacer, either of these uh, results could be the answer. So just keep that in mind. Now the other problem that I asked you to do uh, was 3 fifths minus one-sixth. Let's try to do that subtraction. Again, we have to find a common denominator. One technique for finding common denominator, again, is just multiplying the two denominators from the problem. Five and six. Five times six equals thirty. So that'll work for our common denominator. So let's investigate three-fifths. We want to convert 3 fifths into a fraction that has 30 as its denominator. That means we need to multiply the 5 times the 6 to get 30 in the denominator. To make that legal, we have to multiply the numerator by 6 as well. Multiply straight across, and we get 18 in the numerator, 30 in the denominator. Then we have to look at 1 sixth. 1 sixth, we need to convert that into a fraction that has 30 as its denominator. To do this, uh, we multiply by 5 over 5, of course, because 6 times 5 is 30. So we're going to get 30 in the denominator, 1 times 5 in the numerator is 5. So what we've done is we've taken this problem, 3 fifths minus 1 sixth, and we've converted it into, into a problem that has a common denominator, so we can actually uh, solve it. Uh, 3 fifths we found was 18 over 30. One-sixth, we found, was 5 over 30. There we go. We have a common denominator, so we can subtract these fractions really easily. In the numerator, we just have 18 minus 5. In the denominator, we just keep the 30. 18 minus 5 um, is 13. The 30 is in the denominator. You reduce it, if possible. Uh, in this case, that's your answer. It's a proper fraction, so that's the only possibility. It's reduced, uh, so you're good to go.
Great, so we're finished with fractions. In the next section, we're going to talk about uh, decimals, adding them, subtracting them, multiplying them, and dividing them.